Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Millennium Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight, and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa, building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. In the vast desert plains of northwestern Sahara, where generations of camel herders have roamed for centuries, change is afoot. Beneath these arid sands in Mauritania lies gold, and with it an opportunity for this African nation to develop sustainable partnerships with global investors for the benefit of its people. Mauritania is fast forwarding into a modern mining age, and over the past few years, this region has become home to Kinross Taziast, a mine that has amongst the largest gold reserves in Africa and is owned and operated by senior gold producer Kinross Gold. For one of the poorest countries in Africa, a renewed commitment to mining is the beginning of a new era. But concessionaires are expected to show a commitment to local job and skills creation and partner with local communities. Our story begins in Nouakchott, the country's capital and economic center. We're here to visit the Mauritanian mining minister, Mohamed El Kauna, to understand why global companies like Kinross Gold are investing in his country. I believe that there is a potential geologic associated with a good cadre legal. C'est ça qui pousse les sociétés euh, internationales à venir s'intéresser aux mines en Mauritanie. So, where is Kinross? Donc, c'est dans, dans cette zone-là. Nous pensons que le partenariat public-privé est important pour la Mauritanie. When you look at mining in Africa, there is still a question on how the executive will contribute to, to the development as a whole and not only development of the mining sector. The benefits of the mines are measured above all by the number of jobs created in the country. I'd read a lot about Taziast, but in truth, I didn't know what to expect. Leaving the city to get there was an experience, especially when almost out of nowhere, the vast open mine pit and the infrastructure that surrounds it came into view. It's an isolated mini city standing alone in a vast landscape. We are about 300 kilometers north of the capital city of Mauritania, Nuwacha. It's in the Sahara Desert, so the climate's quite arid, as one can imagine. The reason that the Kinross uh, wanted to invest in Mauritania is the opportunity uh, to build a strong, uh, viable mine that we think, if managed properly, will be a real benefit to the country and its citizens. Taziast is a 24-7, 365-day-a-year facility. 2,700 people live and work here, and 90% of them are Mauritanians. Abu Sao is one of them. I started with Taziast since 2011 as a technician. To tell you personally, the mine has allowed me to win my life and support my family. You see that I'm a little girl, her name is Zaina, she's just five months old. C'est une nouvelle époque pour nous avec la venue de nouvelles compagnies minières ici en Mauritanie. Je crois que la mine doit être responsable, tenant compte de l'environnement et les communautés en, euh, voisines. One of the core values within Kenross is outstanding corporate citizenship. A part of that is becoming a partner with your local community, not only with the government from a national front, but the local community itself. 
As the sun emerges through the early morning cloud cover, we head into the desert to find out about the local community that the mine is reaching out to. Our guide, Muhammad Qatar, is taking us to meet one of the nomadic Moorish communities who inhabit the area surrounding the mine. So I work with the communities around the mine. I love working as a community relations officer because I just love people. Taziast is known for being a pasture land. So there are few families that stay here and there. However, it's just a passage, especially when there is grass and herb. As Taziast word in Berber language means a place of thirst. So water is really very important in this area. And the mines brought water here. I mean, that, that's transformative in, in this space. Yes, that is true. And if you ask them, they will tell you, this is the thing that we want, because it's touching their lives directly. Da Ahmed Mansour feels the impact of wells built by Taziast and regular water deliveries by truck. He's a respected community leader who represents his people in their engagements with the mine. خالق بعد من التسهيلات اللي اللي عدلت عدلت شركة كونروس انطلاقا من توفير المياه وعلاجات علاجات الإنسان تعدلنا ذا كلينيك موبيل صدر تاسكاف تعالج حد هو عاد تقليل عاد يجيبونا بيطرة مثلا في عالج الحيوانات و. So I monitor the ongoing programs and ask the community members how we can serve them better. Mansour trained as a medic and spent years away from his community working in war-torn Libya and Yugoslavia. He's since returned to his homeland. <laughs> Your family, your ancestors have been in this area for generations. وأصلاً كنا نعيش حياة تقليدية طبيعية تطور وتتلقص يعني تنقص المسائل السحاب وقلة العتنة على المستوى المعيشي بالبدائي بالبل والحوانات والنقل وكذا. When you first heard that the mine was coming here, what were your fears and the fears of the community? مخاوفنا كان قلت لك لا تضيق على الم المرعلي إنه هون هاي المنطقة اللي هون فيها صدرة ما تنبت ما هون في موريتان كان إسكاف ولكن ما هذا تخوف يتقلب عليه الفرح يتقلب عليه الفرح ويتقلب عليه النتيجة اللي نرجعه من من الشركة يعني ما مدام تفضل المعادن فنحن نفتخر بها. تخرب من أرضنا وأرضباتنا وجدودنا فيها أكبر شرائك عالمية للاستخراج الذهب. While Mansur tends to his camels and other desert matters, apprenticeship is taking place at the mine. Taziast has an ongoing program of upskilling, growing its bank of employees, and bringing a new generation of Mauritanians into the mining sector. The uh, mining industry is evolving, technology is being involved, and you have to be very competitive in order for you to be able to work in the mining world. What King Ross is doing is to make sure that people of Mauritania that are working here are up to date, are upskilled at the level needed to work in the mining industry. This is a win-win situation. Mauritanian people will win from this training and development, but also King Ross will again what we call social license. Social license is something that you cannot buy out of money, but is your behavior as a responsible company. Mauritania has a big potential to be a mining country and we want people to invest here. We want people to come here. Mauritania is open. I'm Karim Jabira. I started here in November 2010 as a junior metallurgist because I was fresh from the school. Today I'm a deputy metallurgy superintendent. So where are we? What happens here? Here is the last step of the gold extraction of the whole mine. I'm here developing whatever skills I have. I can share it and then everybody is growing together. It's better for, 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 for the whole country, I think.
we have a policy here of the monetization, which is the nationalization of the position that, look, uh, that experts are doing now. Excellent. Myself, I was one of those people who benefited from that policy. When I came here, I came as a superintendent, getting experience, uh, getting more trainings, and after I get those trainings, I moved to health and safety manager. Most of their expertise are expert. We didn't have that mining like in South Africa or like Ghana. And by having the modernization in place means we are developing a mining generation. For me, Tazia is it's another home. When we knock off, you know, we go pray, have a tea, you know, chat. So it's a big family for me, and we always miss to come back to Teziat and you know, doing our own, what's called Teziatl things. Teziatl. Teziatl things. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. While the mine continues to extract gold and sell it to the world, those around it, like Mansour and his community, have been given opportunities to do business with Taziast and become suppliers. and for Mohammed Qatar, it's about what the mine leaves in terms of sustainable development that's important, to see a community take charge of its own destiny in partnership with the mine. Transform the lives of the people in the future. So this is what you do after a long day's work at the mine? Yes, I usually come with friends and then we have tea and sometimes barbecue. And the mine's just that way. The mine is, uh, mm. that's it. Uh, What's the word for sunset in Arabic? El Orub. El Orub. El Orub. El Orub. El Orub. Yeah, you're pronouncing Arabic very well. <laughs> it helps because That's it's so good. beautiful. African Renaissance monument towers over Dakar, reflecting a new democratic era and an end to its French colonial past. Since independence in 1960, Senegal's remained a stable democracy. Modern-day Dakar is filled with activity and trade. An investor-friendly infrastructure, good road system and working port mean the country's open for business and things are on the up. But the interior of the country is also drawing the attention of the world, especially in the mining industry. In this story, we're heading 650 kilometers southeast of Dakar to the Canadian-run Sabordala gold mine. The mine lies on an emerging gold belt and is known as Taranga Gold, which means hospitality in the local Wolof vernacular. Nice to meet you. I'm Dondo Kamara from SGO. Ah, you're the man who's going to show me what happens when a mine comes to town. Yeah, I will show you around the villages. The mine is the first gold producer in Senegal, and with this comes economic promise for the country as a whole. But how will the communities living around the mine be impacted? So a mine has come to town. That's a big thing. Yeah, mine comes to town is a big thing because people here work, they get their salary, and also supporting with a community project. My role is to go to the village, understand the community, and bring back to the project, and also take information from the project to communities. Why are you smiling? Because I'm happy to meet you, and uh, I'm very proud to show you our communities. <laughs> The mine has changed the face of this rural landscape and with it its economic and social realities. 
Previously isolated with few roads and no telecommunications, Sabodala has grown and has become an economic and administrative centre for the region. But change doesn't come easily, especially if it involves displacement. When the man came, uh, he needs water, so he built dams. But beyond this water, there was a small village called Dambankoto. They had to be relocated. Relocation is a very, very hot issue. We had many consultations before people understand the reason and also the new opportunity in the new area. Lasana Sisoko and his family were amongst those relocated to the new Dambankoto. Taranga Gold employs more than a thousand people. Ninety percent of them are Senegalese, and more than half of them come from the Kadugu region. When you look at money in Africa, the private sector can create jobs, can also contribute to tax generation. The tax will contribute to the improving of public revenue, which are invested in the social sectors and also in the infrastructure building. Currently, Sabodola is the sixth largest company in Senegal and the largest employer in the Kedugu region. We believe we will be a significant contributor to the economic growth of the country. Sustainable economic growth is always the overall goal, but in their 18-month engagement with the community, a regional development strategy was drafted in which the community drove specific areas for development. Agriculture and food security were high on the list. We cannot mine and leave our communities in uh, the state we find them. That's why we are financing some projects to try to improve their life and also install sustainable projects. So how different is this village now since the mine got involved in reaching out to the community? You know, Lisa, water is the most important thing the company provided to community. Now, inside the villages, there are step stations in the houses or public step stations. So are the women working harder or yeah. less harder? Are <laughs> no. they working harder at home? No, now they are working less harder than before. That's how it should less be. Less harder.
So it's the rainy season now, that means it's malaria time. Is the clinic full? Yeah, the clinic is full uh, during rainy season because of malaria. Many people around here come for medicine. Along with an on-site clinic for employees, the mine partners with the Sabodala Clinic providing ambulances, fuel and medicine. The mines also built a prenatal clinic in Kadugu. Also, we have a malaria program. We spray the houses and uh, around the village and also along the rivers to kill mosquitoes. Education was also prioritized in the strategic development plan. Taranga built a kindergarten, funds bursaries for students, and partnered with the state to create the Sabodala College, which along with the Taranga Kosanto College, now sees more than 600 students at school. So your father was a cow herder? Yeah, my father was a cow herder. Did you go with him? Uh, no. Little it was Dondo uh, chasing <laughs> the cows? Yeah, but I was afraid of cows. So in this area, clearly Dondo cows are very important. Yeah, because uh, many people are living uh, on uh, agriculture and elevation. That's why uh, Teranga provided water points for cows. Onjarama. And with the water points came solar energy and some very happy cow herders. Back at the mine, it's incredible to see the scale of its operations and to feel the impact that it's having on the economy through jobs, concession fees and taxes. But community partnerships are always a measure of overall success and it was felt that the women of Sabodala needed to be prioritized to help them have more autonomy and financial independence. Local women's groups were asked to step in. Our uh, organization Bunyeke, <laughs> village <laughs> Four market gardens have been set up in the villages around the mine. Fencing, solar energy to pump water, and seeds have been provided. So this garden is really changing women's lives. Wow, jardin bi defa sanje dundu jigeni, parce que jardin bi tahna nyungi leko boba, di dundu dundu boba. Company 
And as we leave the women of Sabodala, we see in their faces, in their gestures and smiles, the feeling of an entire community and the outcome of what's possible when partnership is inclusive and honoring. Learning from communities what they need and letting them chart their own sustainable future in partnership with the mine.